Hello, this is Out of the Blue comes Francis Zhu. I'm Francis, and welcome to my show. Hi, everyone. Today I have Peter Kirk and Jason Warwick as my guests. The reason that I am so inspired to talk with them today is because both of them have just completed a big project.、Um, I believe both are year-long project, and both are also website building projects. So there's definitely some. Interesting parallels in their experience、um, working with the project, and also projects seem to be the way that spirit、um, train our mind on this spiritual awakening journey. It. Projects are very, very practical. It involves countless decisions, and it is a very profound training ground because you truly can use it to tune in to guidance and get get in touch with the spirit within. And also learn from the actual experience what the spirit is. So I am really excited to discuss this topic with them and to see what would come out of this discussion. I do feel that the spirit is. The spirit of love, the spirit of joy, and once we said yes to give our lives over to the spirit, to finding the spirit within, and connect with the love and the joy that is within and without, we kind of. Gave the control to the spirit, and say, "Okay, we said yes, and now you take full control." So the way I experienced、um, this awakening journey so far is that there's really only one decision that we're making, which is. Whether we give our life and all the decisions, all the、um, actions, the purpose, really, whether we give that to be used for the ego's purpose, or we give that to be used for the Holy Spirit's purpose, and once we said, once we made. Once we made that decision, really the rest is out of our hands. Because I see all these curriculums <laughs>、um, started to lay out in front of me, not of my choosing. Different, different,、um, almost like lessons and training blocks.、Um, Different courses, so to speak, they just started to show up in front of me as、um, as a practicum. You know, you're really training hands on, have a hands on training with the spirit to make the same kind of decisions that you would normally make in life, and yet this time is not on your own, is not for a purpose. For the ego, but it actually is to learn what it feels like to give it over to the spirit. 
So this is how I see um, this awakening journey and also the projects that comes our way on this path. And Peter actually started to build this mwge.org website almost exactly a year ago. And MWGE um, stands for Movie Watcher's Guide for Enlightenment. I really love the fact that spirit want to use something so fun and so sparkly for awakening. And it is really um, just so much fun to watch movies with the spirit and have David share this profound and really fun commentary while we're watching the movie. And then I think about a year ago, um, Peter expressed this, this uh, inspiration to actually do a facelift or redesign the website to give it a um, total makeover because Peter is very good at design, has really have an eye for, for the design. So that is, according to my understanding, how that project, uh, how, you, how Peter said yes to the project. And also for Jason, Jason just finished building this website called spirit.ai. Spirit.ai, actually, not spirit, just drop the T, spirit.ai. And that has been a um, very lengthy process as well. And while they both signed up to say yes to the spirit, a lot of, a lot of lessons unfolded, a lot of miracles as well. So yeah, I just want to welcome guys, you guys. Thank you for coming on the show with me. Thanks, Francis. Yeah, thanks, Francis. <laughs> <laughs> so Peter, I just want to start with you. You know, just in the context that we said yes to spiritual awakening without really knowing what we said yes to. Do you see this is very similar even to to the everyday um, decisions like a project, for example, I see it as a means. Um, you know, it's like a a mini episode of of this whole journey that is given to us. And do you see that that's the case as well? When you said yes, you just showed up and without really knowing what you said yes to. <laughs> Yeah, it was definitely not knowing. Um, and I think it was, it was also at a time when, you know, I had been just prior to that um, overseeing the Mexico community down here and um, which um, was uh, pretty like brought up a lot as well. It was um, overseeing, um, brought up a lot of things. And then after that, it was, it was quite intense. And, um, and there were like, seemed to be many kind of movements and transitions happening in the community at the time. And, and I felt for me at that time, when the project came in, I think you mentioned it, Francis and, um, Diana, and it just kind of felt like a, a real gift, um, because, uh, cause at, at that point I could feel like I was in a bit of a shake and unstable and um and then spirit just seemed to like come in with this thing which felt so attractive to me um for one like the movie watchers guide has always been one of my favorite websites um that the community has produced and um and i love working with movies i love sharing movies and talking about movies and um and so when this kind of came in it felt really exciting uh, because, you know, we've had the Movie Watchers Guide website for some time and and um, I've been designing within the community for quite a while as well and it's been one of the websites too where everyone's gone, 
wow, that could really use a facelift. <laughs> so to kind of get that opportunity felt really good. But I, um, yeah, so I kind of felt a spark there. And I, and I guess too, I've, I've always really wanted something that I could sink my teeth into that felt like a big project. Um, I don't know, in the way this was presented, um, it felt, felt great. But yeah, it, it was, um, it was totally new as well because I had done websites before and design projects, but, um, this one took a lot of prayer. Um, you know, every, maybe just because everything was so new, like there was many different points. Uh, we were going from like one platform, um, totally different web platform to another and transferring a lot of content and everything. And everything we were using was new. So like new plugins and new things to prey upon each step of the way. And I think, I mean, what was new about it really new, I guess, was I've approached design projects before quite, um, like I'm, I, I think I've got the hang of like feeling, oh, I like the look of that and then publish, you know, the same day being very quick, but to be given such a, a long-term project, that's also, um, such a big system and so many different moving parts it requires like a lot of prayer. Um, and, and also too, I'm used to being the designer, but with this one, I am, you know, I was more brought in to kind of oversee it, oversee the project, but Jean, um, who I worked with from France, she's brought in as the main web designer. And, um, she's also the one with more experience with the website and how things would work and things would function. So I think while when this kind of came in, I had a big spark to kind of like uh, launch in and but very quickly, I kind of found there were many different aspects that were coming in, which um, where I couldn't launch myself in the same way as maybe I was used to with design stuff of like, looks great, publish. It was more like a lot of communication um, came in very quickly um, communication with Gene and also with different, you know, plugin developers and ones in the community and many different aspects came in. That's interesting. One thing that stood out when I hear you is that actually a project came in or this project particularly for you came in as almost like a gift, as an answer to a prayer of a deeper prayer you know, you, you were feeling, you know, when leading the Mexican uh, community was very, very intense. And also, actually, I remember something. I remember that was the time you really wanted to go back to Australia to visit your parents, your dad, particularly. And, and finally, when that came through that you bought the ticket, the pandemic hit and it was your mother who said don't come back <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I don't know what you were experiencing but I could only imagine there was a deep prayer for stability for for love um, and it just yeah it just uh, warms my heart to hear that spirit answers straight away even though it is not the kind of form that you would think okay i i didn't end up flying back to australia i didn't really um yeah i get to visit my dad but somehow there's a deeper prayer in your heart which is you want to feel loved and you want to feel this this joy and like you said then what happened with the project is not even about design anymore. It was a lot of communication lessons and probably there are a lot more that we can get into, but it, yeah, it really, yeah, stood out for me when you were talking. Yeah. So Jason, 
Do you feel that is that something similar that this spirit.ai project really came in as an answer to some kind of prayer for you as well, whether you realized it back then or now? Yeah, I, I definitely didn't realize it back then, as I mentioned before, but as it went along, I I totally see it as an answer to a prayer. It's, it's funny though, I have that um, scene from Revolver in my mind where Jake Green is in the prison with the two guys beside him. And he says, they were always going to take me. And so he's out in the world doing his things and kind of working probably the guidance that they gave him while he was in the prison. But then he, at one point he says to them, or they say to him, we were always going to take you, but you didn't know what that was going to take. <laughs> and that line has come to me several times. Like, if I had known what this was, was going to do, I never would have gone for it. And also, I did not know this is what awakening took. Like, just to be equal to my brothers. <laughs> what, what, what does it take? <laughs> you mean awakening? Yeah. <laughs> well... <laughs> Uh, well, I'm, I'm still learning that, but but uh, David said to me over a year ago, he said, you're in a deletion process, and he never really said that to me. You know, first 10 years, it was like, speak this, do that, lead this, da-da-da-da-da-da-da, and I, I kept teaching and speaking. It's about unlearning and healing, mm. but but I, again, I'm, I just have to speak my experience. It's like I've never done that before, and this was was a true deletion in the sense every movement that I felt inspired and inspired became a new thing. It was like inspired meant I went very meditative and very quiet and emotions that I never felt like in the movie, the giver, the difference between feelings and emotions. It was like emotions were coming up that I never felt. And I had to give room to this. Yeah. I forgot where I was going. Mm -hmm. but. So with the spirit.ai project, um, I do believe, and I, I feel I experience that over and over again, spirit, spirit guides us through attraction and activation. It's not through sacrifice or I have to do this. Oh no. But it, there is an inner activation that you feel. Um, yes, it is me. I need to say yes, because I feel something like an upliftment or activation. But once you said yes to the project, Jason, um, yeah, what, what did the project, how did the spirit use the project? Well, for you, I, I had to learn what commitment was. I had a lot of witnesses saying, you're not committed. And I thought that was crazy. Like on some level, I was like, I'm committed. I've been here 10 or 15 years. This just crap. Like really, I couldn't understand it. But I tried to stay open, but I something kept blocking. So I had to first make it in a relationship. And coming over here and making that decision within the context of relationship showed me I never knew what. I never knew what commitment was, honestly. And it was like a new beginning. And then Spiri, I had to make a commitment and say yes to that, no matter what it took. And that's why I could never really say I was inspired by Spiri or attracted. You use the word attracted. If I'm honest, what I was attracted by was making things better, doing things better, improving. I had SEO ideas that I thought were true, and I didn't even know SEO. And they got deleted in the middle of the project and I was arguing with Jesus, but this has got to be right. This has got to work. And you don't know that, you know, I'd hear like a line, you don't know that. And, and you don't know what the purpose of this site is for. I had all these big ideas that I had to sort out the difference between fantasy versus tr truth, meaning what, what, for, okay, let's, let's back it up. What's the difference between fantasy ideas and what can actually be done? 
just even in a worldly sense. Then once that happened, like I had these high tech ideas, once we sorted that out, then what can the actual web team do with the money given? Then what's actually given by the spirit? So it was like mm. this huge sorting out mm. to come down to what is actually given. Mm -hmm. So it is sorting out what I want versus what the spirit wants. Yeah, yeah. There's so many layers of complexity on that. I was like blown away. Well, Peter, do you relate to that? Is that something <laughs> that happened to you on the mwge.org site? <laughs> yeah, um, I think just from the start, yeah, there were so many ideas of like what I thought a good site was or what it should look like. And, and also lots of layers too of, I think, still wanting to please um i can see even like amongst the community uh, or the ones you know who i live with and it's just subtle things of like i want to make a good site and i want everybody to be happy <laughs> <laughs> from uh, from what i make and so and so i had like all these ideas of like this is what clarity is this is what clarity looks like on a web page and this is how it should be delivered and the message should be delivered but as, as it went along, you know, and even like, I, I, you know, even like the fundamental things about like what um, platform, like, um, like a, we had a main kind of platform, I'll say, that we use for many of our websites. And it was an ideal to keep that um, uh, because uh, then it would be less work for the web team. And, you know, and, and I wanted that. I was just like, yeah, of course, I, I want that to happen. So as much as I could, it's like I, I kept on going. And I also felt, but it was strange too, because I also felt like, okay, this, this feels good. Yeah, I want to stay the path. But then I'd also be getting like uh, reflections from, from Gene, our web designer, saying like, this isn't going to work. Like I can't, I, I don't like using this platform and I can't see how this is going to come together. Um, I, just, I just don't know. And all, all along the way, I just have these points of like going, okay, I can hear it. And also things seem to be moving slowly. Like it, it took a while, like at the start. And then I kind of pray again and it's just like, but I'm still feeling this, this same platform that we're using. So I don't know what to do with that. And so I'd, I'd pray, I'd join with Mighty Companions and, and, they'd, and we'd come back to, yeah, it feels good, keep on going. So for, for so long, it seemed like it was all about a lot of communication and also it seemed, I thought I knew the direction we were going in with the, with the site and like kind of like how it was going to finish up in some kind of way. But I think the most fundamental, <laughs> then, then at one point it just all started to not click. Things weren't clicking. And, and then Jean's <laughs> voice got louder and she was saying like, this it really isn't going to work. I can't make this work. And it was just like, whoa. And, um, and then it just hit this point of like, there was a big reshuffle that kind of came in that really, I guess, flipped my, my whole mind with this, which was, which was the point where it's like, I, I thought I had direction we were going the way the site was going to look, but we got so far in the process and even like designing the look of pages and things like that. And then it was like, there needs to be this core shift in the whole project about we're using a about using a different platform and we need to do it quickly too because time is you know coming up to when we wanted to launch the site and everything like that and i was so i'd become so kind of entrenched i guess in what i thought it was to be and um how it was to look and everything that it started to like become a hindrance to how i was working like and um my my thoughts and i couldn't progress it's like i i couldn't move and there was this point where um eric who's overseeing the center here he was like called to kind of jump in and help out with the project because we needed extra assistance and and there was this just this time of like okay we're switching the platform um and <laughs> eric came in and he made all these you know there's this day of like really quick decisions about the website things that i would have taken weeks to kind of like <laughs> try to feel out like the font the colors 
and all this kind of stuff. And within one day, we're all on this call together. And Eric's like, what about this font? Do you like this one? How about Eugene? What about you, Peter? Okay, let's go with this one then. And, it's, and I was like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and, uh, and I'm saying to Jean, hey, Jean, if we choose this font now, can we change it later on? She's like, well, I think that would take a lot of work. So it's just like, okay, we're kind of stuck with whatever we, we come up with now. So we're making these decisions. It's, we're not really stuck, but it was... It was just a day of like colors being chosen, button shapes being chosen and all these things and elements. And we, and over the process of three days, it was really disorienting because yeah, um, Eric kind of stepped in more and, and lots of decisions were made and the site kind of just changed before my eyes into something I didn't recognize. And um, when I was on the phone call, the initial phone call, it felt like such a shift, so radical that I felt sick like i was about to throw up <laughs> i i was like <laughs> eric was asking for my opinion on something and i was just like going, i couldn't even speak and um and and the whole thing just kind of felt like yeah where this whole designer self-concept kind of thing which i i think I, i've been using in the community to for some kind of like validation and like i guess for my my place and something I knew was valued or some, some idea of something that I thought was valued and that I was good at and to suddenly it became a, a, a hindrance and, and it had to be just kind of totally set aside to, to move so there could be f freshness. Um, and so it all, it all changed so quickly, but the other beautiful thing was, yeah, I mean, even at the time, Linda, my partner here, she just said, I think this is, just for you just to let go of this whole designer concept that's been just there for so long. And um, I just kind of stepped back a bit and just let the whole thing unfold. I let Jean just kind of go for it and Eric and, you know, and, and so much happened in the period of like a week. The, ho the whole site totally transformed. Uh, new plugins, new tools, everything kind of came in and things started to be functional. <laughs> things started to work and I was just like, wow, okay, this is amazing. And, the, and, and two, the funny thing was, even though I kind of had this designer identity and I had some vague idea of or fantasy of the direction the site was going in, it was never anything solid, n never anything so solid that I could totally complete it or do it myself or like get all the elements in place. It was just a block in my mind. So when the whole thing took a different direction and came about, I was just like going, wow, this is amazing. And I felt like so much more space come into my mind after just totally letting go of it. Um, I felt so much space and, and um, rest um, actually just to kind of let it unfold and um and, and now and even like design wise it kind of feels like beautiful to me now as well it's like oh wow it's yeah it's, it's kind of became beautiful um <laughs> also but not in the way i thought it was gonna going to look you know it's, and it, and it kind of like <laughs> it, it just totally surprised me i guess <laughs> how interesting i i really hear a lot of um parallel of all the projects that i got my hand into as well ultimately um this you know we always get into a project and especially it is something that we already know how to do it to a certain degree we always come in with some kind of um past associations to the degree that we we, we want to let it go it's almost like okay we are still bring some kind of um, limiting beliefs, concepts, and, and past associations with us. And somehow the spirit just has a way to correct all of them. And in your case, it's because I know that when that happened, that moment when that happened, you were already in the process for at least nine months. You were in the process of nine months trying to make it work. And not only it, it was so difficult, you have all kinds of problems, tech, technical problems that 
almost like every day became problem solving <laughs> for you and you couldn't even solve it with Jean. And then when that total change happened, it was two months before it had to launch. And it was such a, a tight, tight, tight time frame. Like if you couldn't do it in nine months, how, how could you do it in two months and change absolutely everything, wipe everything out, restart? And yet it did, it did unfold in front of your eyes and without your um, interference, like not interference of Peter's per se, but it's the mind, you know, like from the past, it's almost like Jesus said, your only part is to not interfere. That's what he says in the course. Yeah. I think, and I think one other thing that it really felt like a trip, I think at the, when we did that changeover too, because I was really trying to look back and, and say, but what did it mean? Like all this time, what, what did it mean? Because I, I mean, like it was, it was a major undoing for the design thing, but like, even like thinking like, but I prayed upon this. I prayed many mm. points along the way. I joined with mighty companions, sat mm. down, talked about it, still mm. felt to proceed. And it kind of like on in the time way, kind of like didn't make sense. Like, why did it, why did it happen that way? <laughs> but like, but it's funny, I think in a greater kind of context too, it kind of felt like, I mean, for one, I feel like I can't judge anything and don't try to analyze what happened and try to analyze the past. But I, I think at the time after I uh, had the leadership role in the community, there was a point too. then um, my father kind of passed away um, like a few months ago. And, and when that happened, like there was a lot of emotion that kind of came up at the time because it was, there was that desire to go to Australia or some sort of like, I need to see my father before he passes away. Um, and so it was, that was really kind of like, um, like a, a real kind of shake and, and looking back at this project, I mean, I just felt like I, I mean, I, I had it as an, as an anchor to stay in a lot of communication throughout the whole time that just could kind of like keep a focus and kind of keep me, keep me afloat. And, um, and also there was a period too, when Linda and I, we, we wanted just to have like a little bit of a, you know, a break from like, um, living with the group here, which was because we both had some intensity kind of coming up. So we took some time to live in co-living in La Casa, just the two of us there with the co-living group. And, um, which was a beautiful time too, but, but also there was like, I was in a bit of a spin with everything that had been happening in the year and I didn't even know where I stood. Like, I kind of felt like, well, maybe we're going in a different direction now. Like maybe I'm meant to be taking off in a completely new way on a new path or something like that. The, my mind was really kind of going really, I had, I had no idea, but I still had the, had, had the Spiri project and it was, um, sorry, the MWG project. And it was my one link. Um, hmm. my one like anchor that kind of was grounding me through all this different kind of stuff happening and, and even like the technical problems and everything, it still required a lot of communication <laughs> and a lot of joining through that time. So it was the one kind of thing that kind of really pulled me through hmm. and I don't, and I don't feel any regret now for the amount of time it took, hmm. um, I could see like there were many points along the way where from the old designer concept, I kind of, there was this desire of like, I just want to do it myself. I even like, even if I could do this completely by myself, um, even though I didn't know how there's, there's still some kind of like insistence of like, I can do it like some, I can do it attitude. And even when through that time, like there'd be like Jean was working on a different website, the music lovers guide. Um, and that, and she was still giving a lot of attention to that because it was just finishing up. And so she wasn't as available to join on the project um, all the time. And there would be points where it's just like, I, I want a dedicated, someone who's there for me like 24 seven to connect with on this, but I just get like little windows or pockets of time to, to kind of connect. And, um, and yeah, I don't know where I was totally going with that. But <laughs> <laughs> but it was um 
but even that was like the yeah you know, the thought of like yeah I if I could just take this completely by myself and use the tools that I want to use and if I had unlimited time to work on this <laughs> I would just carry through and um, and do this myself in the way I want to do it it was really uh -huh. there's a really strong kind of yeah like um, concept of I can do it um, in my mind but it was a lot of communication and, and that's what it required and it was a lot of yeah, joining and, and it couldn't have been any other way. It wasn't to be a, a Peter website. <laughs> no. And interestingly, that I want to do in my way was never really that clear in front of our eyes until it is done the spirit's way. And you started to see, oh my God, it's it actually everything is done for me. I it's so easy. It's sort of like you know, every, everybody is activated and, and everything unf unfolded in front of your eyes without this, you know, difficulty and do it and solve the problems. It just like so quickly unfolded. And for you to see, wow, there is a experience of peace actually when, when it's not my way and when I allow myself to be cared for and taken on yeah. the ride. And it's so much more easeful when it's like a collaboration rather than a, a personal. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to do this personally, and then I take all the responsibility for it as well. Yeah, I just feel there's just a lot of parallel also with what Jason was going through because that was also a very lengthy project for you, Jason, and uh, you also had to do a lot of communication with the the web builders um, that we're collaborating with in Brazil. But, but just like what Peter was going through, it was actually without knowing it, it was a total undoing process um, by the spirit. Mm. Is, is this the same for you? Like my way or my idea mm. um, got undone or is there something else that mm. you feel was totally... Um, been letting go of, been let go of. Yeah, no, I really relate to that. When Pete's saying that, I, I really relate to the drive. Uh -huh. You know, the whole project, but it just made me question whether the whole project was given over and over. If if I was by myself and there was such a drive, then yeah, why was I doing it? But like I told you, I think that just learning to get in touch with my feelings and not not pass it off onto anybody and then be willing to give it up if it wasn't given, you know, but there was a moment actually where it was apparent they were building a platform to build other websites rather than a website. And David and I prayed because he was feeling it too, that something's not right. And, or yeah, and, and we needed to communicate. So I communicated with them and it was a time to cut ties with the whole website and lose half the money or continue on and I could feel I still felt this drive again and it was, so I went for it and I I think it was really mixed with I want to do this I can do it better so I kept going and it's like but slowly slowly it's almost like it was getting um, washed away in the project and the funny thing is I didn't want to build just another website with just David's content. I already felt we had too many of them, which was one of my judgments from the beginning. And this is what ended up happening was <laughs> it's another website with content. And I was like, but when I were like, <laughs> just kind of relaxed into it, what I really wanted was my own career, my own teaching, my own style, my own every, I was in competition with David. I was in competition with with everybody and I just kind of started relaxing into well what if David's already done it all and all I have to do is share his materials and point to David and I can just <clears throat> I can just relax and be me and have a relationship and and heal in a context that makes sense instead of competing and it was like this tremendous load started to come off but then i'd question do i continue on but 
but then take me home came in and it was like, okay, build a, build a course on the site. No, still do the search thing. Okay. Yeah. We're going to build other language sites and we'll do an article team. Every time I'd give up, I want to quit. Something else would come in that showed me, okay, we're going to keep going, but not in the direction you wanted. So it was like, okay, there's something else happening while the drive was being washed away. It was very confusing, but also very inspiring, if I can say that. So, yeah. So the website, you had a very grand vision or grand idea of yeah. how the website is going to end up with in terms of functionality and in terms of look. And it went nothing like that no. in a direction that's not like that at all to the point that you actually want to question the whole direction. But then every time it was shown, the moment you want to step back, the direction was given you. The moment you want to step back, the spirit's direction was given you. It was very clear. Yeah. Yeah. I could say that now it was clear in the moment. <laughs> <laughs> clear is, is rarely a word I use during this <laughs> But yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that's the thing because Jesus actually says in the Course that perception, perception is partial. So nobody can, can actually have the, the, the total understanding. So whatever we perceive is always partial. That's why we are lining up with the Spirit's uh, vision because even with the MWGE side, I kind of see how Peter went through this whole thing and it was a very, very lengthy project uh, pro process. Then everything got turned upside down or right side up in the last two months. And then it's, it's done. But I actually talked with Jean and just to hear her perspective and it is really interesting to hear the full perspective or the full story because Jean apparently um, has always loved the movies, especially the Movie Watcher's Guide for Enlightenment website, so much so that years ago, she just built, rebuilt the whole site in a weekend because she really wanted to do a makeover for the site. And she's a very skilled web developer. So she, she just did it out of this burst of inspiration, uncontrollable passion, boom, she did it in the weekend. And then she felt shy or ashamed of telling us. Um, so she kind of just hinted that if, if there's ever an WGE project I'm in and just patiently waited for years, then when this happened, you can imagine how much inspiration and passion she shares you know and I think she was also willing to line up with whatever that was felt at the beginning for the first nine months but it reached a point where I think all throughout the, the nine months what she told me was at the beginning she didn't necessarily feel the platform that you were feeling, Peter, but, um, but Laverne was another one who was part of the team. Laverne said it to her, like, why don't you speak up and uh, insist on it? And you sh if, you, if you don't, that's not very inspiring just to line up. And she was really angry when she heard what Laverne said. And, and she got so angry that she said, no, nobody can just live by inspiration. If everybody can live by inspiration, nobody would pay tax. Nobody would do laundries. Who would do these kind of things? So she was going through this, this total, um, I don't know, it's, it's like a process in her own mind. Like it was a huge resistance. When she heard you can trust your own inspiration, it was actual anger that came up instead of, Oh, really? Can I do that? And it, it took her a while to actually be able to see that, yes, this is how you can live and how you can do the project. And also, she, I think she made a prayer also before 
getting into the project, she really wanted to do it a different way. She wanted to find a different way of, of doing things. And with that prayer um, given up front, that all this inspiration was just swirling in her heart. And then to the point that she really couldn't hold back anymore, partially not just because of, of anything else, but it's, it's also her internal process of being willing to risk it all and say, I'm going to speak up my inspiration now. And when she finally did, this whole thing turned around. So I do see that as well. Nothing went wrong. And if anything, everything went right because Every time we follow the spirit guidance into something, it is always an undoing process. And you can't, you can't direct your own um, undoing. You can only, if you can direct it, you're doing it with I know mine anyway. So you always say yes to something. And then the process just unfold and it's always multifaceted miracles that's unfolding. For Jean, of course, it was a huge st strength um, she experienced to, to also to get to know what spirit language is, which is joy, which is inspiration that she can trust, she can speak mm -hmm. up. And I feel with you, Peter, mm -hmm. it is a, a, a contrast experience which spirit uses to teach us there is an experience we can go for, which is stepping back and relax and allow things to, to kind of come to us. And we don't have to really um, strive for anything. It is such a relaxing message and yet somehow, um, it is very hard to get to to actually um, relax into it. Yeah, yeah. Because I think even coming from the leadership role previously, and then coming into a project, there's still like some mentality of I need to call the shots, and and it needs to be good for the whole whatever my idea of that was at the time. And I think you know. Those thoughts of what works good for the web team, and as I said, but and and also it's like it's can't I can't really there's there's always that little kind of like the ego is always wanting you to look back and say, well, what if I just you know followed that right from the start of like Gene mentioned Elementor, or why didn't what happened if we just went for that? But it's it's in, an impossible situation because it's kind of like judging in judging the past, and it's also kind of like, you know, I can't see what what it's going to look like for my healing, and what is it going to take for me to get in touch with all these, you know, control in my mind and self concepts of being a designer and all these different things. I don't know what it's going to take to unwind from all that stuff, and it's just that temptation to think like like the form is going to show me whether I'm following the spirit or follow following the ego. But it's like, I can't even judge that. I can't judge the way things look and the way things are unfolding. So it's, it, yeah, it's, it was, it's been a real kind of, yeah, it was a real, real trip. Um, and I think still it's, yeah, just still kind of, for me, I still feel like there's a loosening that's happening there of being open to the inspiration and, you know, and, and to do things to really, I think open-mindedness is the biggest kind of, yeah, lesson. I, I, I feel like still like continuously being open to the spark and following what feels like it's coming from the spark rather than my own set like timeline or list of to-dos and, you know, what I think the process should be. Yeah, it's, it's a big one. Beautiful, Pete. I, something really struck me when you're speaking. I'd like Francis to even maybe say more about it because yesterday Francis and I talked and with what you were just talking about, she she quoted the Bible and said, uh, 
blessed are those you're going to have to speak blessed are those that have faith and don't see or something but when she said that i just thought of you and me with this project like going seven months with the quote wrong theme or me like going if the whole thing's in the wrong direction but somehow in the bigger picture it was a way to sort out our minds and and given for us to do just that so how could we judge it at all and when she said that i just felt like okay as long as the project itself is given thank god i'll take as long as it needs so yeah yeah and also um i think recently a lot of people started to say to me that thank god is a lifelong journey it used to be something that um i i didn't like and i perceive other people didn't like either oh why is it so long where where am i at in the in the journey am i getting there soon when is this going to happen but recently more and more I feel the same way and I really see the reflections back. It's like, thank God, this is a lifelong journey. I can just relax. I don't need to have any goals in in terms of the timeline where I should be. And you can really relax into it. And that is what I also consider commitment. When you talked about commitment earlier, Jason, commit to, to saying yes to the spirit and commit, you know, to give everything in this life to that purpose, including the project and committing that every single task and projects are used to get in touch with the spirit. And I do feel in a way you get in touch with the spirit, even though um, it took a lot of sorting out, oh my God, you know, you see clearly what was blocking the way. And yet the goal was to get in touch with the spirit. So it actually, if, if we can make any judgment, we can only say that spirit was very successful. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the spirit knows what he's doing with absolutely everybody because everybody's um, blocks, so to speak, are very individualized and yet even just with one project and with different team members they somehow are given very specific roles and through that through saying yes to that and giving themselves fully to it they all reach the point of they find the spirit the, the ease the peace and the relaxation, and it was always a very happy realization. You know, that's truly what I, I see. And yes, what you were saying, Jason, was that we can't really just judge, look back on one project or one element of this whole awakening journey and say, it, sh it should happen this way or it shouldn't happen this way, because there is such a big plan and it is for us to trust the bigger plan, the bigger picture. And we're playing a specific part in it. And really what we can do is to show up and say yes to it and make room to the best capacity that we can to, to the spirit. That's what Jesus says in the Bible, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. And I think, yeah, it is very relaxing that we don't have to analyze anything and then to be stressed if we haven't seen the, the lesson or even the gift or the miracles, we can still just relax in that trust. It's all going to be okay it's all going to be okay it's beautiful wow okay guys well thank you so much i think 
this is a good good spot to just wrap up today's um, discussion. And I really enjoyed listening to you guys and um, all the insights that you shared. I really relate to everything you say. And I really hope that um, everybody who is listening can, can really see how, how loved we are by the spirit, even the projects, the undoing, the training ground that he offers is offered out of um, our prayer and as an answer to our prayer. And still at the end, no matter the, the seeming um, intensity or whatever that we're going through in, through the process, at the end, it was such a happy, happy realization that we're, we're so loved, we're so cared for, and we're so carried. And life should be very, very easy when we live it with the spirit. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you, Francis. Thanks, Peter. Yeah. Thanks so much, guys. This was beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. And I really look forward to spending time with you next week. Bye for now. <laughs>